Merrill Memo with Matthew Dickerson from Dubbo Regional Council. Ninety three point five Triple M. It is Chatty and Matho for breakfast, and uh, it's great to have a chat once more to the Mayor of Dubbo, Matthew Dickerson. How are you, mate? I'm very good, thank you. Thank you for having me on, and good always to chat to you and Jody. Yeah, our pleasure. Our pleasure, mate. Very good news for tourism, mate. It is up, um, sort of that pre-COVID uh, t- type of numbers. It's getting out up there above pre-COVID numbers, and it's really easy, typically, to compare tourism today to what it was, say, a year or two years ago. But that's a little bit unfair because, obviously, with lockdowns, you're always going to hope it's going to improve. But when you start to compare numbers against pre-pandemic levels, that's when you get a, a real comparison. The latest data has just been published by the Tourism and Transport Forum Australia, who knew something existed called the Tourism and Transport Forum Australia, TTF, as we like to call it. And they're showing that tourism in the central New South Wales area is up 11% compared to pre-pandemic levels. So that's good news. The second part of the news, which I thought was really good, was that the visitation in the under 30 years of age brackets, that's you and Jody, for example, Matho, in that bracket, (laughs) the tourism has gone up by 11.7%. Now, for Dubbo, for example, that's usually more the slightly older bracket because we find that the visiting friends and relatives market, the VFR market, is our most popular market. So that's when people have got their families, they've got some kids, they're a little bit older, and they come and visit Dubbo. But that under 30 market means we're really capturing a different part of the audience. So that's good news. Then you look at some wider stats around Australia. Central New South Wales region is in the top 10 preferred regional holiday destinations in Australia. And then to put a cherry on top of it all, the Dubbo region is the most visited area in the central New South Wales region. So that's always good news as well. With all of that, our visitor guide was launched a couple of weeks ago. That's got 107 of our partners in there. So Dubbo residents haven't paid for that. Those 107 partners all contributed with advertising in there. So they're paying for that particular visitor guide. And that's something that we'll see a really good impact from as well as that gets around the visitor information centres across the, the states, across the eastern states, and it will be delivered into every mailbox in Dubbo. So when you and Matho and Jody and Matho have got your friends visiting, your family visiting, which I know happens on a regular basis, you've got that visitor guide in your house so you can say, hey, look at all these great things we can do. Yeah, that's great, even just for the weekend. Yeah. yeah. to work out what to do. Good fun. But it sounds great. The tourism is up because Dubbo is awesome. Yeah. It's People like us. It hit the nail on the head. Not, not the internationally renowned zoo or, or the jail or anything like that or the beautiful flora, the flora and fauna. Um, that, uh, that's fantastic news, Mayor, Mr. Mayor. I think that's great. Yeah, now, I love uh, keeping track of things and managing things. And um, There's a new water portal app. So we had smart meters installed a few years ago and they're typically installed on households in the Dubbo town limits area, I'd call it, and the Wellington town limits area. Most people would be vaguely aware they might have had a new water meter installed, but you can't physically have a look at it. But you can be pretty confident you've got one if you're in those two areas. And if you've got one, you can now go and download the Water Portal app. You just go and search in whatever you've got. If you've got an iPhone, search in the Apple Store or Google phone or Android phone, sorry, search on Google Play, Water Portal, uh, P-O-R-T-A-L. If you search on that, you'll find that app, download it. You put some details in about your property, for example. And once you've got that, you can then look at your water usage in near real time. The data is uploaded from your smart meter every day. So you can see your water usage yesterday, last week, last month. But the data on there gives you hour by hour stats on what your water usage is. So you can look at it and see... Does the water usage go up dramatically when Matho gets up in the morning and has a shower, for example? Is it when I'm watering my garden? What's using all my water? Then you can also set up SMS or email alerts, and that'll tell you whether suddenly water usage has gone up. Has someone left a tap running? Is there a leak somewhere? So you can really manage that. The whole idea of this, obviously, is to try and reduce your water usage. And the old saying is, if you treasure it, then you measure it. So if you want to actually go and see how you can reduce your water usage, then first of all, measure it, look at it, analyse it, and then you can actually start to reduce it. Yeah, no, that's great. It's not going to be good for my hair washing days. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that every day, Jody? Twice a day? Yep. 
Oh, I've gone all natural. <laughs> it's naturally fallen out. <laughs> Tell us about uh, Keswick Estate, Mr. Mayor. A stage five release. Stage five release two is now, the lots there are now registered. Now, this is one that we had an auction last year, October last year. We had an auction of the 52 lots there. And the auction went good, then not as good as we'd like. So we had that staged over three different auction days. First auction went well, second and third auction, not so great. We've been slowly pushing Keswick Estate there with those blocks of land, but it's been a bit frustrating because even though we've been selling those blocks off the plan, you haven't been able to register those blocks. You haven't actually been able to transfer the funds, own the block of land and go and start building on it. So those lots are now registrable. If you drive around Keswick Stage 5 Release 2, you'll see sold stickers on the lots that have been auctioned off and they were sold. People now own those blocks officially. And you can actually look at the rest of the blocks there. There's land area that ranges from about 600 square metres up to about 940 square metres, various prices on those. You can look on the council website and you'll see a bit of advertising, a bit of social media activity, etc. It sounds like it's all going ahead. Yeah, great. It's growing. We are growing exponentially. Thank you so much, Mayor of Dubbo, Matthew Dickinson, for joining us today and uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Fantastic. Always great to talk to you too. Meryl Memo with Matthew Dickerson from Dubbo Regional Council.